Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to take a look at this Glary 335 semi hollow type guitar, and I'm going to change the pickups. The pickups that came with it uh, sound okay, but they're pretty microphonic. So anytime I use it with any kind of volume or distortion, it just starts squealing and feedbacking in a bad way. So um, we're going to test that, and then I'm going to install some new pickups. They're from a company called Bootstrap Pickups, and there's some humbucker size P90s. Really excited to uh, see how they sound. So let's go ahead and dive in. Everything you said, they already knew, more or less. Well, here's something that you didn't know. Two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off.
Okay, I got kind of a rat's nest here because I haven't put it all away yet, but I'm just connecting my multimeter to ground and I'm checking to see if everything's working. So I've got 8.72 DC resistance, and then if I flip it to the other side, 8.71, 8.72. So the pickups are basically wound identically the same. So they seem to be working just fine. Um, to explain a little bit of my wiring setup, so here we've got the two white wires from my pickups coming into the three-way switch on either side. This middle leg, you know, sends the output of the three-way switch, goes along this ground wire to the input of a 250K volume pot. I've got a treble bleed here, 150K resistor in series with a uh, 103 is the capacitor, I'm sorry, 102 is the capacitor code. 102 coincides with a 0 .001 microfarad. So this capacitor is 0 .001 microfarads. The idea here is that the signal comes in and then this resistance kind of slows it down. So it's almost like a mixing resistor. So it's not just a pure treble bypass. And then this selects the frequency that gets allowed to pass. So as you roll the volume control down, some of the highs will be allowed to pass through and create a more balanced signal. Then I'm running kind of the 50s less Paul style. So one output is going to the output of the circuit. The other output is going here to the tone control, which is running a uh, capacitor with a 0.01 microfarads. So that's a little bit smaller value. You might usually see 0.02 or 0.047. I'm running 0.01. So it'll be a little bit less dark and woolly and hopefully a little bit more effective to just roll off a little bit of high end. Then I am grounding to the back of the pots. I've had some trouble doing that in the past, but I found that it's all about getting the right temperature with your soldering iron. So I found if I crank it up to about four and a half, that worked perfectly to get the back casing of the pot heated up. You know, so you need a hot enough soldering iron to do that, but you don't want it too hot that you nuke the internals of the pot. So um, that was what I found worked really well. So all my grounds are connected right here. I've also got a little ground here. So in the output, this goes on the blue wire, uh, which connects uh, through a heat shrink to this red wire. This was the one that originally went to the output jack. So I have not replaced the stock output jack simply because I did not want to fish it through here and find a way to do it that way. So that's my wiring setup. I've got three-way switch, master volume, master tone. Let's go ahead and get it installed. All right, I got the toggle in. Um, I'm gonna leave it a little loose. I also like to put the toggles kind of at an angle. You know, this would be kind of 90 degrees parallel, but I like it on a little bit of an angle. I find that that's just a little bit more comfortable for me to play. But I ran into a problem here with this volume control. Um, it doesn't fit in the hole, so I've got to gotta drill out that hole just a tiny bit wider, which is kind of annoying, but got to do it. All right, guys, I did some work off camera, and you can see I've got my three-way switch installed here. My master volume, master tone, I'm leaving these open blank right now. I probably will at some point uh, fill those holes if, if, that, if I decide this is a setup that I like. One issue is I did have a little tiny bit of tear out. You can see these, these two scratch lines here. When I was widening open the hole with the drill, uh, I was just being, I got a little bit too aggressive and uh, it did actually tear out just a little bit of that of the, of the one of the layers of the laminate basically um, so I did put a little bit of glue on there and put it back down but there are those scratches there now so um, in the end it's gonna be okay I don't you don't really notice unless you're looking at it and frankly for this glary guitar um, it's gonna be all right I'm not gonna lose a lot of sleep about it but the setup is complete the new pickups are in let's go ahead and listen to it and hear the clips before and after
guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. These new bootstrap pick pickups, I think, sound really, really fantastic. I think that they give it this kind of really, really interesting P90 character. Definitely a lot more punchy, a lot more, um, you know, the, the old pickups with the harmonics and, and just, they're kind of dark and a little bit more bland sounding. These have a lot of liveliness and a lot of good, just punchy character to them. I love the warm, fat neck pickup tones. And the bridge pickup actually sounds really cool. Kind of um, changes the character of this guitar almost more like an Epiphone Casino kind of type feel, uh, which I think is a really fun sound to play around with. So uh, I'm overall quite thrilled with this change. It has brought some new life to this guitar and it kind of takes it to a new level, I think, than where it was at previously. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Go check out Bootstrap Pickups. Uh, they're really high quality, good sounding pickups for a really good price. And I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.